Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and this is another video, it's a different type of video from me, it's a bit of a tutorial video and one of my frequently asked questions is how do I start, how do I start to make videos on YouTube, how can you help me get started, what do I use, what do I record and I thought it would be so much easier to make one video that I can point you in the direction of it so you know exactly where to go if you need to go. So I use three different pieces of software to record my videos in general. Now I'm recording this using Camtasia screen record so it's not going to be as the usual quality okay so please forgive me for that. I won't be able to edit out the background noise or whatever but I thought it was really important to you know just show you exactly what I use. So I'm going to start with Fraps. Now Fraps is a screen recorder and it records your game um, and it records, you can choose that it records your game sound and your voice or you can do like I do and record my voice and fraps separately. Now the reason that I record my voice and fraps separately is because using Camtasia, if you record it as a one file, you can't edit the difference between game sound and voice sound. You can with the more expensive ones like Sony Vegas and things like that, but if you don't have that, then um, doing it this way is also a good thing. Now let's focus on fraps first of all. Now fraps is a frames per second recorder and it is quite taxing on the majority of computers. I mean even my computer will drop a frame rate when Fraps is on the mark. So one of the things that I've found that really helps combat that is to have two hard drives in my computer. Now I've got a solid state hard drive which most things run from so like all my Windows startup, my games and things like that and my recordings get saved to my standard hard drive which is called volume E. Now I know that not everyone has two hard drives of course you know but if you do have one hard drive then maybe look into getting an external hard drive. It's not needed guys I'm not saying you have to have this I'm just saying that if you're having lag with fraps it will help if you run it on one and record on another. <coughs> sorry about that. Um, so yeah, it will definitely help if you do that but if you don't, don't worry too much about it. You can still use Fraps, you just will have a lower frames per second. So let's talk you through Fraps and what settings you want. So that's just your general settings, don't worry about that. Your frames per second, that's just all your benchmarks and things like that. The only thing that's important is this key here which is your overlay key. You can benchmark your computer if you want but it's the overlay key that actually matters. Now what I mean by overlay key is when your game is up and you can see your town or your sims or whatever. If you want to check your frames per second you'd hit F12 and in the left hand corner it will bring up a number. And that's what your game is operating on frames per second. Um, I can't show you because Camtasia doesn't record game. So I can't take you in game and show you what that frames per second looks like. But uh, basically it's just a number. The most important settings is in the movie section and this is what it is here. Now the folder to save in, you can choose where that goes, okay? So you can change that to go anywhere on your computer. I save it to a folder that I made within Fraps which is YouTube videos and that just makes it much easier to know where they've all gone. The video capture hotkey, you can set this at anything but the default is F9 so what that means is when you are in game and you're ready to record your gameplay you hit F9 on your keyboard and it will start recording. Once you have finished recording what you've done hit F9 once more and that will that will be your recording, that will be your clip if you like. The video capture settings, this is your frames per second, this is um, how it runs. Now for The Sims, I can't really speak for any other games, but for The Sims I recommend 29.97, which is a custom one. Now I don't know why it works better than the 30 frames per second because it's so close to it, but it does work better. And it was Nicole Key that I saw that showed us that that was the best um, capture sense to use and also full size. The loop buffer length is automatically set at 30 seconds so I wouldn't really change that. 
And with your sound capture settings, this is when the decision needs to be made. So if you want Fraps to record your voice as well, then you would hit that record external output and it picks up whatever microphone you have. But if you just want it to capture the game sound, so the sims, um, you know, the talking and things like that, then it's record the Windows sound and record it in stereo like that. Leave these unticked. They're absolutely fine to leave them unticked. And screenshots, again, this is something I never do. I use the in-game screenshots more, but that's the settings that I have that. And if I did, make sure JPEG or JPEG or whatever is um, ticked. So that is Fraps in a nutshell. And basically, once you've recorded it, it'll record it. You can get Fraps for about £25. So whatever that is in dollars. And it is the best one out there. Like in general, it is. It gives the highest quality without too much faffing around. Um, DX Story is a really good one as well because it doesn't drop your frame rate the same way that Fraps does, but it records quite dark and you do have to lighten it up and play about with the gamma and things like that. So for beginners, it's probably not the best and Fraps will give you true, true picture quality. So yeah, Fraps is definitely the best one for that. So that's Fraps. Alrighty. So the next thing that I use is Audacity. And Audacity is what I use to record my voice. So gameplay, Fraps and voice, Audacity. And Audacity is a completely free system that you can use and it was actually Sims 3 Symbiote that told me about Audacity and it is brilliant. It's really good because the great thing about it is it allows you to record your um, voice obviously but it also can edit out background noise, you can amplify your voice, you know there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do that you wouldn't normally you know kind of be able to do if you just used Fraps alright. So just going to give you a quick tutorial on this. Now these are super quick guys. So if you are confused or you need a bit more in depth then let me know below and I will help you as best I absolutely can okay. But to be honest if you stick with the settings that you see on the screen with me you really won't be, you won't go wrong. You really won't. Okay so let me just check that this is recording yet. Yeah, okay that's fine. Um, Alrighty ho so this is the... Uh, the panel here and it looks ever so confusing with all these top things but seriously you probably use about three things maximum like seriously maximum um you've got your different things your microphone it'll pick up whatever microphone you've got and it'll pick up it'll pick up all this guys if it doesn't pick up your microphone there's a drop down menu and you can try and find it and and it will be there all this don't worry about it just make sure that these are up to the top Okay, just make sure these are up to the top so it records you properly and the rest you really don't need to worry about. Now the key to Audacity is remaining quiet for the first, I would say, 8 to 10 seconds. And the reason you're doing that is because it picks up your room sounds. So obviously I've got the computer beside me, you know, the tower, so it'll pick that up. It'll pick up maybe my fish tank in the background. Um, any noises that you want edited out of your video, it'll pretty much edit that out. It won't take out chair creaks or pets or you know sounds that randomly happen but things that are constantly there so like the buzz from the computer or the trinkling of the fish tank it will remove them. So let me show you. So you press the record button and remain silent for like I say about eight to ten seconds or whatever just something like that just remaining quiet on there just now once you have done it you then hit your stop button and that is your recording file right there all right now what you then do to edit this you don't edit it in here apart from what we're about to do now so what you do is you want to do the noise removal so you would select a section so click and drag okay so just click and drag a silent section where you stayed completely quiet then you want to go to effect and then down here to noise removal. Click in there and step one is to get the noise profile. So that just reads that bit of sound to see what it needs to edit out. Once it's done that double click okay, and you want to go to effect again 
and then noise removal again and then this is all the settings that I use. I don't know if these are pre-populated or whether I played about with it, I don't know but seriously just use them and you'll be good to go and then you hit OK. And what that'll do is that will run along there and take out all the crap in the background that you don't want. Now, it can record it fairly quiet. So what I would recommend you do is you amplify the sound. And the way you do that is effect and amplify. And it will give you a suggested amplification number. Go with that. Don't try and mess about with it and go for a specific decibel or a specific setting. Go with its recommended one because it's never done me wrong yet. It will be different every time. Sometimes it will be 15.6. Other times it will be 24. You know, whatever. And you click OK. And that amplifies that right up there as you can see and that just is so much clearer and better and you've got your noise your background noise is gone your voice is clear crisp and it just makes a really good recording um, as you can probably tell the audio quality just now is not as good because I'm using Camtasia's recorder so audacity is far better Sorry for keeping checking this guys, I'm just checking time and such. And then once you've got your file like that, what you need to do is export it. So you go to file, export, and then choose where to save it. So I'm just going to save it to the desktop and I'm just going to call it T2, so trial 2. And you just save that, you can leave all them blank and then hit OK and here's the file down here on my little desktop. Now a tip for when you are, obviously if you've got two separate files running, okay, what I tend to do is I'll start my audacity and remain silent for the few seconds and then what I'll do is go back to my game and I'll hit the record button on fraps. So that means that the audio and the recorder are running alongside each other. Pause your game Alright, so pause what you're doing and then these will be running alongside each other and what I like to do is say pressing record in 3, 2, 1 and hit my play button on my game and then that gives me the correct point so that they all link up with each other if that makes sense. So it means that I can edit all the different crap out. So that is that one. So I'm going to take you on to Camtasia now. Camtasia is a great program. It is an editing program and you can record the screen as I am doing at the minute. And this is what it looks like. You can have a 30 day free trial all right, um, with Camtasia which means that you can use it for 30 days and make a decision on whether you want to keep using it or not, okay? There are ways around at the end of the 30 days, because it is quite expensive, it's like 200 odd um, pounds to do so. If you've purchased it, great. I know that there is other ways, like sometimes you can get a couple of licenses, so if you know someone who has a license, then you can, you know, get that if you like. I know some people buy like multi-licenses. Um, so yeah, so that's a way, so if you know anyone that's that's got that, then that's a good way around it. Um, but it is a really good one, even for the 30 day trial. All right, so how do you do this? So you would import your media, okay? And you would find where your videos are. So I'm just going to go to my YouTube videos. And I'm just going to, just for talking sake, bring in these two clips, okay? So you would highlight, so click and drag these two and click open. Alright. And you want to import that sound file as well. So you go and find it. It's on your desktop and it's trial or T2 if you like. Then click on the video section and it'll highlight the two of these or however many you do end up with and then just click and drag it into track one. Now once you've done that it'll come up asking you what dimensions you want your your um, video to be. For YouTube I highly recommend this one, 1280 by 720 which is YouTube settings. And then as you can see this hasn't started this at the beginning here so you would click and drag and it brings it to the start. You want to do the same again with audio and just drag it along to the second one and it'll bring up the second track here like so. Alrighty, so as you can see there's a lot more video than track so I'm not too worried about that. Now how would you edit these together? So 
these two lock buttons, these mean that if you lock that, you can edit this without affecting that and vice versa. So I'm going to lock this bottom track and I'm going to take this, I'm just going to click and drag this along to the start of the audio and I want to cut all this bit out here. So I want to click and drag this and use the pair of scissors here for cut and that just cuts your audio back. If you want to boost your audio, click on it, click audio and then you can either use the volume up to click it up or you can drag it to whatever you want and you can be up to 500% but I don't know if you'd really want that or you can completely silence it if you want. That's an option as well. All right. I don't particularly use anything else apart from that. You have options for noise removal up here but I don't find them particularly useful and that's why you know, removing the noise in Audacity before you export it is the best. Alright, so that is how you would affect the different noise and again the game volume can sometimes be quite high so you could bring that down you know, so you can adjust the levels in comparison to your voice because there's nothing worse than watching someone's video where you can't hear them over the game's noise. So it just means you've got a bit more leeway on, you know, different things, different noises and stuff. And you can see that this is a bit more of a a noisy part of the, the bit. So what you can do is if you want to just isolate this one, you can split it. Okay. And then isolate it at the other side as well and you want to split it again and it means that you can then bring that volume down and leave the rest of them at the same sort of volume so if you want to mute something in particular that's a good way to do it there's various other things in here there's transitions there's, there's loads of things these are this is a very very basic this is how can I do it and get my video out there type thing if you do want you know additional information with Camtasia then I can do that maybe not publicly on the channel but I can help you out one on one if it's something that you really want once you have your files how you want them you then go to produce and share now you can upload it directly to YouTube I would advise against that because it doesn't give you the option to delay the release or whatever so I would just hit produce and share and it gives you a whole bunch of options here share to screencast YouTube and then all of these the one to choose without a doubt is this one here so mp4 only okay up to 720 you do not want to choose that one or that one you don't want it with a video play you just want it on there and then once you selected that you would hit next and you would name it whatever you wanted and then finish and it would start to render the project. I'm just going to come out here and say no I don't want to do that. So guys that is pretty much it. It is a super super fast <laughs> tutorial and it may seem like a lot of work and the first few times it may be like oh my goodness what am I doing here but genuinely you know genuinely once you keep going with it it will be a lot quicker and you will zoom through it where before you were very much you know stuck you'll be able to get through it really really quickly um so yeah i hope that you enjoyed this i hope you find it helpful i hope i've not confused the life out you i'll probably watch this back and be confused myself so it may not even reach you guys <laughs> if it's terrible and really hard to understand but I hope that it does help and you know if you are considering you know setting up your own YouTube channel then go for it guys don't hold back I waited eight months of doing it with it you know before doing it I should have just went for it there's no harm in it and it, it's such a good hobby so anyway guys you have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you in the next part bye